Bobby and I are here to demonstrate some spear fighting. We've got brand new spears with good thick thrusting tips on white waxwood shafts. We've got our helmets, our gloves, we're wearing gorgets and cups, and we have our gambesons on. So we're pretty well protected and we're ready to fight. You'll see that we'll be using mostly fencing techniques, but every now and then some big swings come in. Uh, we will stop every time that we score a point and we kind of just tell the other guy, good point. All right, here we go. At this point, Bobby's been training with me for about five years. And he's a pretty good staff fighter. My first point is a cut under into a one-hand jabbing thrust. As I thrust, I use the shaft of my spear to parry his strike off to the side. In the next exchange, I try to snipe his hand with a snap strike, but I only hit the center of his staff between his hands, and Bobby takes my front leg. Point, leg. I circle to try to find an open line of attack, but when I finally thrust, so does he, and it's a mutual hit. And, hey, no point. No point. Next, I try some one-handed jabbing thrusts, which miss, and I can't recover fast enough, and Bobby stabs oh. me in the stomach. Good. Nice. Good. Next, I fake a high strike, drawing his weapon up and opening his low line. As I thrust for his head, Bobby goes low. Luckily, I nip his helmet. That's our score. I lost him. Here I cut under Bobby's staff and parry him down to open the line for my straight thrust. Next, Bobby opens with some hand shots, but good for me, they miss, and he opens his high line for my one hand jabbing thrust. The next time he tries, however, he's more accurate, and he manages to hit my hand. <laughs> next, I attempt to parry Bobby's spear high as I cross the gap, but Bobby manages to pass my weapon and stab me right in the heart. Since I'm not going to rush in again, I decide to bomb him with some long-range, one-hand jabbing thrusts. It was a close match, and Bobby's a great student. Tub tilting is a children's game, but a fun spear-related training activity. It appeared in a book called How to Do Things, published by the Farm Journal in 1919. All right. The first round of tub tilting. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Bobby versus Joe, tub tilting. The five gallon buckets that we chose didn't offer a very stable base of support, but I guess that's the point. Bobby and I each reflexively grab the other's weapon but immediately let go because that's against the rules. When I do manage to get the tip of my weapon on him, the force of my own push pushes me off my bucket. We each work the center line, but without being able to move, it's hard to find an open line of attack. So far, Bobby's winning two to nothing, so I say, let's switch buckets. We continue to fence, trying to find the center line, but again, Bobby's lower center of gravity, or better technique, makes me fall off my bucket. 
at this point, I'm losing three to nothing, so I'm pretty sure Bobby's won this match. However, I don't want to give up my first game of tub tilting before I get him off the bucket at least once, so I keep going. Our first match went really well. However, the second match reminded us of how dangerous tub tilting can actually be. Oh, man down! And again, just a few seconds later. Don't worry, except for a bruised ego, Dalton was okay. My next fight was against Bernie. Bernie's my size, he has a lot of martial arts experience, and he likes to fight. Bernie believes in fighting smart, not hard, and he uses the plunger head to hook my arm and pull me off my bucket. It was a pretty clever move and worth looking at again. Of course, I have to take a stab at trying the technique myself, but Bernie's ready for it and I'm unsuccessful. Bernie gives me a gentle push against my helmet and I'm off my bucket. As we fight, you can see us use the techniques of fencing, parries, beats, cut unders, and cut overs as we try to find an open line. I think I'm starting to get the hang of lowering my center of gravity and standing on my toes to stay on the bucket. It's a fun but difficult game. You need to concentrate on both defense and offense, and if you push too hard, your own energy can carry you right off your bucket. In this round, I think I'm too much on my toes, and you can see that bucket wobbling under me, until eventually, I think I throw myself off. Again, foot placement plays an important role. This time, when I stand up on the bucket, you can see that my heels are hanging off the edge, much to my detriment. Four to two, just one more point, and Bernie wins. You can see in this next exchange how Bernie's shot slides off of my headgear and his own momentum carries him off of his bucket. I went to the trouble of purchasing plunger heads because we were trying to recreate the illustration that originally appeared with the article. However, you could just as easily play this game with padded spears. Four to four. Somehow I've managed to come back from behind and tie this match up. We cross spears, I get lucky, my plunger head catches his shirt, and this match is over. So now that you see how it's done, make up some boffer spears and play a little tub tilting with your friends. Your homework for lesson 9.3 is to armor up with a mask, gloves, and a cup so that you can practice safe spear fighting with your partners. And if you're feeling up to it, try a few rounds of tub tilting. As you spear fight, remember, thrusts concentrate power. Therefore, it's important that you wear a good fitting helmet and protect your neck with a gorget.